Amen. Well, this was a great morning so far. I feel like I could probably just sit down because God preached my message during the worship and uh, during my husband's exhortation, and I thought, oh, I'm good. I could just sit down here, just relax, <laughs> and we could all go home. But um, I know you're expecting a little more than that. So, and God has given, put a word on my heart. So I'm excited about that because there's nothing worse than standing in front of people and not having anything worthwhile to say. So I love that the Lord is so faithful and good. Um, you know what? My husband had the, the week off, which was lovely. He was resting in peace. <laughs> not totally, like, not like, you know, six, six feet under or anything like that. Not that kind of resting in peace, but he was resting peacefully, knowing he didn't have to think about ministering this Sunday and just, you know, just, you're so blessed, Dean. You're so blessed. You know what? I, my first choice is always to hear my husband speak, but it was nice to see him resting as well, and it was my pleasure to be able to give him that chance. So I bless him. He's a man of integrity. I love the way he brings the word so faithfully, Sunday in and Sunday out. How, to, how in the world can you be on every Sunday? But my husband's full of the Holy Spirit. He loves the word of God and studying it, and he preaches it without compromise, and I really appreciate that. I have learned so much through my husband's ministry. He's a shepherd. And I've received and been blessed by, by, by his gifting. And I'm, I just love you, Dean. I love you. And so it's, I, I'm not anxious for you to die, but I'm glad you're resting in peace. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> this could go off track really fast. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you have brought our church together for the ministry of blessing you and worshiping you and receiving the word today. Our hearts are ready. We're like clay to be molded into your image, Lord. I thank you, Father, for myself, that your Holy Spirit is my helper today, that you think through my mind and you speak through my lips the things that you would have to be said and that your word will not return void, but it would accomplish what you sent it forth to do. So we declare that over this entire service in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I uh, just got back on Monday from nine glorious days of camping. It was so wonderful. So, so good. I was completely unplugged. Like, like completely unplugged. I had to bike up two kilometers, almost entirely uphill. There was a, a plateau every now and again to get even weak cell service. Oh, this is the view from my campsite. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, just phenomenal. And, uh, and there's me out on one of my hikes taking a picture of all things, the ground. But I was just looking down and just mesmerized with the berries and the mushrooms and the moss. And it was just gorgeous. And when I walked on it, it was like a four-inch sponge. It was just like, oh, I was like, oh, this is so nice. So I was traipsing all over there. There's me. I made it to the top of the hill to get cell service. It was weak cell service. Uh, this is at the beginning of the week. I was even wearing long johns. It was, it was windy, and it was raining, and it was cold. And that's me. And the only thing weaker than the cell service was my legs because I got up to the top of that hill, and I'm not kidding. Like, I could barely stand up. In fact... I sat down when, at one point I even laid in the ditch later in the week when it was warm. I just laid in the ditch. I wasn't even at the top yet. But that's a long ways. When you're a prairie girl and you're just used to going like this, to have to go like this, what's with hills? They look really good from a distance. That's what they are. They look really good from a distance. I was so unplugged, though. There was no news, uh, no events, no polarizing opinions, no... Uh, no um, cur uh, curfews, not curfews. Um, what am I trying to say? Deadlines, responsibilities. I mean, I, I couldn't even do my work. It was great. So I just left it all behind and forgot about it. And uh, it, was, it was a fabulous time. Well, um, it, the best time of it really was that I got to spend time with God. He is great company, you know that? God makes for great company. Man, he's so easy to get along with, so loving, kind. He listens really well. And, 
And when he speaks, he speaks out of his love and compassion and care. You know, there's no selfishness in him or any. It was just, it was just so much fun. And I think he had just as much fun with me. I think maybe he wondered a couple times when I was singing, like, you know, okay. But, uh, but fun. We had so much fun together, and I just really enjoyed that, that time. It, you know, it was a gift to not have the noise of life going on. That was a real gift. I'm a country girl. I'm comfortable in the country. I'm comfortable in the country all by myself, hiking and biking and walking about the woods and doing my thing. And, and it was just refreshing, so wonderful. But as I, was, as I went out there, I had expectation that my family, different ones, were going to join me, which would have been great. Some did a little bit. Would have been great. But it was, just ended up being me and God. And, oh, there's some of the wildlife. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? Here's the interesting thing is I'd been traipsing all over the woods and everything all by myself, and I don't have a bell, and I don't have, like, bear spray or anything. Anyways, it turns out there was a bear in our, in our campground just a few days before, but, um, and I smelled a lot like hot dogs. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, I got that feeling like there, this is a path that I walked down, and, and, you know, as I'd come into camping, I had some things on my mind, some questions, some concerns, some you know, uh, even just to do with work, some things that need to be done were weighing on me. And, and God, in that meadow, just numbers of times that I walked down that path where apparently a bear had actually been just days before. Oh, well. Um, and I, I heard him say, don't concern. I, I'd bring something up, and he'd say, oh, I've got that. Don't concern. And this, this, the storm inside of me, the questions inside of me, would still and calm. And I'd say, well, what about this? And he'd say, well, I've got this too. I know about this, Laura. Don't concern. And he would repeat that over to me the beginning of the week. And then I ended up adding on some extra days camping. And with each day that went on, I had this sense of being watched, not just by bears, <laughs> of being desired, of this incredible longing for me and I realized that it was God it was his Holy Spirit just longing for me pursuing me with this persistent love that was so just a, such a tangible sense of it you know like I could I could swear walking down that path that he was he was just just overtaking me like that and yet it was peaceful and it was powerful and it was it was completely refreshing, and it was so good to be reminded of God's pursuing love. You know, maybe you're like me, and sometimes you get doing the business of life, and you become desensitized or numb, sort of. Or maybe even you just take it for granted. I've been a believer for 47 years. I've walked Jesus has walked with me, and I've walked with him. And sometimes, Lord, forgive me, but it can get kind of like you don't notice anymore how much he loves you, you know? It's like that first love. It's like remembering that first love. And he refocused me while I was away, reminded me how much he's pursuing me, and that's really the basis of it all. And I want to encourage you today that God is pursuing you. He really, really wants you. He really, really desires you. You. If you were the only person on the face of this planet, he would desire you and he would be pursuing you. Maybe you're completely unaware. Maybe you've never known that God was pursuing you before. That his love is persistent and passionate and full of desire for you to be with you then this is good news for you today. And you're going to be encouraged. Oh, isn't it nice to hear some good news for a change? You are pursued by God. And my message today is called Pursued to Pursue. Pursued to Pursue. Because you are pursued. You know what? The entire Bible is about God pursuing you, isn't it? When you look in Genesis chapter 3, you already see that Adam and Eve 
after they, they fell into sin, they didn't run into the arms of God. No, they did the other, and they ran the opposite way, and they hid themselves in the woods. Of all things, like you can hide from God. And God came, and he said, where are you? And he was pursuing them because he's always been about relationship with us. And right from the beginning, we see that he's about reconciling that relationship with him, restoring us to our destiny and our purpose in him, to know him. He's so passionate for that. When Jesus came and he shared, he shared parables, stories that were easy to understand, to show people how much God pursues them. And he told this story in um, Luke 15, two, two parables, actually, the one about the lost sheep. You know, you've got 99 sheep in the pen. You'd think you'd be happy, but the good shepherd, no. He's chasing after the one at his own peril, hunting high and low until he finds this lost sheep. He is desperate to find that one sheep and to bring it back into the sheepfold. It shows the pursuit that God has for us. Or the woman who lost one of her ten coins. She ransacked the house, looking high and low, desperate. Have you ever lost something and your heart almost pounds like, oh no, where's my keys? Or, oh, where's my cell phone? Or my, my wallet? What do I do with my wallet? You know? Well, she was like that, just frantic to find this valuable coin. And when she found it, I'm guessing it was in the bottom of her purse the whole time. But when she did find it, what joy and celebration. And she was just thrilled that she found that one coin. I mean, she could have went shopping with the other nine, but she was desperate for that one. And that's how Jesus is. Jesus came with a mission to seek and to save that which was lost. Did he not? That's the greatest mission the world has ever known. And it's a mission that's possible. Jesus did it. He came like on a, on a hunt for you and for I. It involved him giving his life, the only son of God, sacrificing his life so that we could know him. He died on the cross and rose again to pay for our sins. Wow, is that not love? And he did it while we were still in our sin before we were even interested. In Isaiah 65, I want to read this passage because I've never really noticed it before in this context. But Isaiah 65, verses 1 and 2, God pursues us even when we're obstinate. You know that? Even when we're just not interested. To the Israelites, God said this, I was sought by those who didn't ask for me. In other words, I revealed myself to people. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am. Woohoo! Here I am. To a nation that was not called by my name, I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way that is not good according to their own thoughts. And I want to encourage you today, if you're a parent and you have a child, whether you raised them in the ways of the Lord, or maybe you were born again later and didn't have a chance, your kids were grown up and gone from home before you could train them in the ways of the Lord, but they're rebellious and they're not walking with the Lord, I want to encourage you that our, your, your Father God, He is stretched out His hands and He is reaching to them all day long wooing them, drawing them, giving them opportunities. And you know, as a parent, you just keep praying for them. You keep loving on them. You don't reject them. And you keep trusting that God is doing his part all day long, every day, persistently, without giving up. He's not offended by their rebellion. He is passionate for them. And he's drawing them to himself. And you pray that believers come across their path and there will just continue to be more and more opportunities. They'll come to Jesus. Jesus threw open those doors of salvation to everyone who will. There's not a single person on this planet that God is not willing to come into relationship with him. And there's no greater security and honor when you, 
when you experience the, the pursuit of God, when you realize the love that he has for you, there's nothing like it. Nothing compares with that. It melts the hardest heart of stone. Even after you give your life to the Lord Jesus, you know that Holy Spirit comes and lives within you, does this miracle inside of us, right? And our spirit's alive. And he continues to pursue us. He doesn't drop us like a hot potato then, like we were a prize that he got. No, no, no. Now the relationship's just begun. It's the launch. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I don't really have, uh, sorry, goals and pursuits. You know, like God has put, God, God has put in the hearts of man, uh, like he's made us in his image. He's put in us a desire to be seekers and pursuers. Even the unbeliever. Unbelievers seek and look after things, pursue things, right? Um, we pursue things like financial stability or good health, um, a job advancement, careers. We pursue romantic relationships. Huh? You don't have to be a Christian for some of these things, right? I would guess that in every re romantic relationship, and by the way, if you're married, that counts you. You're in a romantic relationship. That there was a pursuer in your relationship. Who, if you were the pursuer in your romantic relationship, give me a hand. You're a pursuer. There are a couple honest people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, there you go. Yeah. And for the others who were pursued, wasn't that fun being pursued? The pursuer got the joy of winning. Right, my love? Mm-hmm shaking his head obediently and the pursued just melted i know from experience with that kind of pursuit yeah it's how it works you're never going to get anything if you don't seek after it i mean seriously if you never ask her out I'm just saying yeah you can make googly eyes all you want but you're going to have to ask her out all right all right all right i'm off track <laughs> But when you're born again, now you have the Spirit of God living inside you, and He gives you that inner compulsion to seek and to pursue the things of God. Uh-huh. That's the difference. We all have the ability and this innate uh, desire to pursue things, but God initiates pursuit of Him. And so there's two things that He wants us to pursue, and He empowers us to pursue and the first one is pursuing God. Pursue God deeper than on the day you got born again. And the next day deeper. And then deeper, deeper, deeper still. We shouldn't be the same yesterday as we are today. We should be growing in our relationship with the Lord, right? Yes, we should. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 says, But you, O man and woman of God, Flee the things, and it's talking about the carnal things that the world chases after, like the love of money that will just bring you sorrow. And it says here, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. These are God. Pursue God. Pursue him. And you think, why do I need to pursue God? He's already poured his love on me like I can just be on coast now. I've got my salvation in my back pocket, and I've got a ticket Ticket for eternity. It's all good. But there's so much more to receive from God. So much more. And when we walk in close relationship with him, that's our sweet spot as his children. That's where we are strong. We're unshakable. We're joy-filled, right? That's where our circumstances no longer dictate and shape us and our lives and our perspective. No, 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 no. When we're in relationship with God, he dictates, he shapes us, and then we have the reaction or the response or the advancement towards our circumstances and change, see them changed. That's how it works. The more closer we are with God, the more influence the Holy Spirit has in our lives. And that is a good thing. That's a really good thing. You know, when we pursue God, it's, you, know, you don't just say, okay, I'm going to pursue God and then don't really just go about your life. No, no. There's disciplines of the faith that are the tools for us that God has shown us in his word to do. Disciplines like prayer, 
fasting, serving, giving, worship, discipleship, reading the Word of God, all of those, and they're called disciplines because, well, they're good for you and you should do them, especially when you don't feel like it. Yeah, especially, especially. Rick Warren has this quote, your most profound and intimate experience of worship will likely be in your darkest days. When your heart is broken, when you feel abandoned, when you're out of options, when the pain is great, and you turn to God alone. Anyone else found this to be true? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit, when we, when we dis discipline ourselves to be intentional in pursuing Him, to growing in Him through these disciplines, he does so much work in our lives. And I'm, I'm just going to give you the references. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but he enables us to have spiritual fruit, right? That's from John 15. And he prays for us and helps us in our weakness. Thank goodness, Romans 8, 26. He illuminates the word of God for our understanding so that we can know God better. John 14, 26. He guides us. He reminds us that we're a child of God, of our identity in him, in Christ Jesus. And that we can trust the Lord because he's faithful to his promises. It's nice to have somebody who gives you reminders. So nice. That's Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. But you know, the pace that we keep is like a cultural phenomenon, right? I mean, when you, when you think of the pace that we go in our day and age, we have so, like, demands like no other generation has experienced. So much demanding our attention and requiring of us and, and um, pressures. I mean, I was thinking about it, and just even triaging the texts, the emails, the, the calls, um, like, it's phenomenal. The amount of information that comes into us, even on a daily basis, is really over the top. And then, besides that, we've got social media. I call it social media, because you've got to weed through it <laughs> to find the good stuff. There is some good stuff on there, but you really have to weed through it to find it. And, and to do with that, you're, when you are on social media, you're seeing the highlight reel snippets of people's best moments but it doesn't look like that to you when you're going when you're on social media you look at it and like they're like they're looking like a million bucks you know and like how do they get their lips that big and <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying and and they they look like movie stars their lives are perfect their family is always loving and caring. They don't seem to have any lack. They have the most incredible vacations. It looks like they're only on vacation all the time. They eat beautiful food, beautiful food. They are chefs. They have, you know, it's just, and we get off of our social media, and this voice comes in our head, and it says, you don't have enough. You're not enough. You're not doing enough. You're not good looking enough. Uh, your family, your friends, they're not enough. Uh, the other people have more likes than you. You're not like that much anymore. What? This is, this is lies of the enemy. And he uses it to distract us. We end up trading in our satisfaction and our joy in the Lord or dissatisfaction and distraction. And rather than spending time pursuing God deeper, we are trying to keep up and manage it all and not fall to pieces and not spin in circles. And what am I going to post now? So I look just as good. Huh? Right? <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Social media. There's that lie out there is if you do more, you're worth more. But that's not what God says. God says you are loved, period. 
You don't have to do anything to get any more love than you are. He, like I said, he longs for you. He's pursuing you, and he paid the highest price to be in relationship with you. There is no one more valuable than you are, just the way it is. So we've, we've got a lot going on. But over the years, I've been learning the skill of being more aware of God's presence in my life spending time with him more, being more diligent with that, being um, quick, first thing in the morning when my eyes open up. This is simple. Acknowledge God first thing in the morning. Talk to him, express your love to him. Thank him that you're waking up. Instead of moaning and groaning and complaining about the alarm, say, thank you, Lord, for this breath that I have, for this life that you've given me. It is a gift. It's a gift to be alive. It's a gift to serve you. It's a privilege to house your Holy Spirit, to dwell with you, to abide with you today. Let me not take this for granted today, God. Holy Spirit, you're in charge. You lead me. You guide me. And I'm going to get out of bed with joy, with joy of the Lord. Yeah, so he stills our anxious hearts and all the anxiety that can happen because of the things going on in our world. When you spend time in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. So be intentional. He satisfies your soul, the word says. He satisfies your soul. Your soul's your mind, your will, and emotions. You, you keep your mind stayed on God, and you'll have his perfect peace. You know what? We, you can, you can um, and you should, pursue God on your own. But you know what? We're blessed to have a local church family, Champion City Church, where we pursue God together every week. Even midweek, we're pursuing God. We're, you know what? We're coming up with a once-a-month encounter night. And this is a time of worship and prayer and ministry and the Holy Spirit to one another with the gifts of the Spirit. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be amazing. It is for all generations of Champion City Church. So come on out when we have those, and you will not be disappointed. There's something incredibly powerful and anointed about pursuing God together in unity. You can expect to hear from God on those nights, clearly. Second thing God tells us to do is to pursue community. Pursue community. I sound like a um, repeat of what my husband said, but it's God really put this on my heart. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Now flee youthful lusts. Now if you're a youth here, you can ask your parents what that's talking about. But uh, you know what? It's not just for kids. Youthful lusts are immature, carnal desires that we can get caught up chasing after and pursuing. And that's not God. Instead, we should pursue, here we come again, righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And then here it is, with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. You're here because you're desiring God kudos. You're watching online because you desire God. Kudos. And you have a pure heart because you have the righteousness of Christ within you if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. So look around and all of these people who are calling on Lord and our pure heart are people that God is calling you into community with. He's not telling you to be best friends with everybody. That's, that's actually impossible but to be in community together. And I'm going to share more about that. Why should, we, why should we bother? I mean, God's enough. Isn't God enough? I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you know what? God and me in the country, and like I really enjoyed those, those days away. But it's a small amount of time, very small amount of time that we would pull ourselves away from the body of Christ. Jesus is enough, but he calls us into community by his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit unites us, actually, with the body of Christ, binds us in the spirit of peace with one another. And so it's so important that we allow him to have that work and that we're open to it. The Holy Spirit is working to do good things in us, and community is an avenue for that. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and 7, I'm not going to read this one, but jot that passage down. It reminds us that God has equipped every one of us with gifts and ministries for what? The building up of one another. Not so we can hold it to ourselves, but so that we can share it. 
What's the point if you're all by yourself all the time with all your gifts and ministries? Isn't that really productive? Not at all. God wants us to share and to encourage one another. Holy Spirit also uses community to honor, to bring God, honor to God, to the price that it costs. This high calling that you're walking with God was very expensive. It cost Jesus his life, God his son. And so it, it gives God honor when we build each other up. When we, and when we're together, it builds our character. It, it helps release the blessing of peace. When we, the Bible says, when we dwell together in unity, there God commands his blessing, right? So Ephesians 4, 16. I'm going to read that one, actually. I don't know if, Tracy you have that. It doesn't matter. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness, that's humility and gentleness, with long-suffering, which is patience, bearing with one another in love. That means eh, sometimes you, you, you overlook some weaknesses, some faults. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is something we're to be pursuing. That, sorry, did I not tell that? The reference is Ephesians 4.16. Oh, well. Look up whichever verse you want to. Typo, typo. I know, that's what it says in my notes. <laughs> uh, James 5.16. Uh, Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. You're righteous avails much, accomplishes much. So it stimulates humility, faith, grace, and healing in community. You know what? Community really gives life. Over my Christian life, I grew up in a Christian home, and so church was like family to us. We lived far away from all our relatives, and they were family. And I can remember from being way little people that had seemed maybe insignificant, but they had an impact in shaping my life. Like sitting in church, and I would be very young, and I would be sitting with Mrs. Warren. She was a widow, and very tender-hearted, a very gentle personality, and I really was drawn to that. And growing up on the farm, I'd never seen such beautiful manicured hands as hers. They just were just like her heart. She was sweet and tender. And so I'd sit with her in church, maybe because my parents had four of us and it was like they were farming us out. I don't know how I, don't know how I ended up sitting with her. But she would, she would pass me little chiclets and stuff during church, during the sermon. And I just love being near her because I love that character uh, that was in her. And, and old Mrs. Babcock, Mr. and Mrs. Babcock, but Mrs. Babcock, do you ever meet anybody who's perpetually old? Like they just have been old since you met them and they stay old for like ever? Like, she was old. And, and on Sunday nights when we'd be in worship, and, like, she was just, I think she was half the height she was supposed to be. Um, she's, we, would, we would have kind of, like, encounter nights. Worship, ministry, it was powerful. And Holy Ghost would fall and, and on Mrs. Babcock and touch her. And she would straighten up, and she would start dancing, dancing and running uh, loops around her row like you just you know she just found a spot and she just went and she just went and fast and she'd be whooping and 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 shouting to the lord and in tongues and in in english and just and it was like she was completely transformed into a young person it was phenomenal and then as a as a young, as a child i sat with my mouth hanging open <laughs> because it was like a complete transformation and when I was older, it would bring tears to my eyes because I realized that's God. That's the power of God. And she was just an amazing lady. I remember uh, in community, my parents were phenomenal, awesome examples and mentors for me. But they, they did a lot of hospitality, like so much. And some of the best times were in community. I remember so much fun. One time we had Pastor Bain and his wife and their family over for dinner. And we were living in an old farmhouse at that time. And during dinner, a mouse runs through the dining room. And Mrs. Bain saw it. And she 
jumped on the chair, like, and then she jumped on the table, and she was jumping and screaming and shouting, and the, the roast beef and the gravy and the potatoes were like bouncing around, and, and the men jumped up, and they got a couple brooms, and they were whacking all over the floor, and us kids are laughing. It's so funny. And, and then it went into the living room, and under the sofa, and they flipped the sofa, and they were whacking the sofa, and I don't even remember if they got it. It was just hysterical. But when it was all done, there was plates on the floor, and it was just a, just a total disaster. It was so funny. And I often think back to that. I asked my mom a few years ago, Mom, was that, like, was that a dream? Like, I have this really crazy dream of Mrs. Bain dancing on the table and screaming and shouting and crying. And my mom said, no, that, that's what happened. <laughs> I don't even know if they came over again. Oh, boy. So much fun, right? The, the best times happen when you're with other people. That's not going to happen if you don't invite someone over. Hopefully you don't have mice in your house. Or Mr. and Mrs. Smith who would pray over me and, and blessed me at my graduation and believed in me as, and, and ministered to me while I was away at Bible school. Um, they actually um, were our MCs at our wedding and just people like this who have impact on you. And then when Dean and I, years later, God called us to Edmonton to plant Champion City Church, do you know who was first to step, step up? and say, actually, we didn't ask people to support us, but they just uh, got in touch with us and said, we heard that God called you to Edmonton to plant a church, and we want to financially support you monthly. And I mean, that's what happens in community. It's amazing what God does. When I was a teenager, we didn't have a youth group in our church, but there were youth groups in other towns. So 20 minutes, half an hour down the road, and my parents would drive me, but sometimes I couldn't get a ride, and there was a single lady in our church named Lana, and she was close to 40, and she would drive from town, come pick me up, and drive me down the highway 20 minutes, and drop me for youth group, and pick me up after, and drop me off the farm. Like, I mean, just went the extra mile, you know? My mom's best friend, Karen, was like a second mom, and she spoke life into me. All the people in my churches over the years that would speak to me like I wasn't a kid, you know? And then as you grow, you see how important community is. And I am so grateful for the people who shape my life and the people in my life now who are shaping my life. We're doing community together, and you make me better. Thank you. Thank you for that. If... And you know what? Honestly, I don't know if I would have made it. I don't know how high school would have turned out. It was, a, I would, it was a dark place, the school I was in. A really dark place and a scary place. And, um, and being the only believer, it was, it was tough. And Jesus was my best friend. But you know what? Friday night? I, I looked all week long to Friday night like it was a goal. If I can just stay alive until Friday night and see my Christian peers. Seriously. How important that was. Parents, if you have teenagers, let me encourage you today. We are blessed church. We have a team that ministers to our youth every weekend, sacrifices their weekend time to be with our teens, to encourage them in the ways of the Lord, and to give them community. If that's the very least, I didn't have the most spiritual youth group, actually, but they were Christians or from families that had same values as us, and it was a safe place to make friends. And uh, I want to encourage you. With our kids, it was non-negotiable. I'll tell you what, we're the parents, and I mean, we're going to be strong, courageous in this. We know this is good for you, and it doesn't matter if you don't like the activity. It doesn't matter if you don't even like some of the kids that are going this week. You know, sometimes there were drag marks to youth group. But we faithfully got our kids to youth group. Even before we had a youth group here, we took our kids to other youth groups in the city to make sure that they had Christian connections. It's so vital, so important. So do that, parents, for your kids. You know what? I want to pray for our kids. I did this in the earlier service. I want to pray for our children right now. Heavenly Father, we pray for the children of Champion City Church, for the young people of our church, that uh, they would not just be molded by their parents as good of mentors and trainers that they are, Lord. We thank you for that anointing in the parents' lives, but we pray that these young people would also be shaped 
in the context of community right here in Champion City Church. That there would be those of us who would rise up and be the Mrs. Warrens and the Mrs. Babcocks and the Mr. and Mrs. Smiths and the Karens and the Lannas to, to minister, step up. Lord, help us to make a difference in their lives and, and that we would share our lives with one another so that all of us would find our identity in Christ in the context of community right here in Champion City Church. Lord, we thank you that you're bringing in friendships, you're bringing in connections, you're bringing in God connections, Lord Jesus, to accomplish the plans and purposes that you have for our lives, for our children's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know what? There's not really a right way to do community. We're all in different places in our lives and it looks different. Some of you are about sports communities and going for coffee communities and games or whatever, or just eating your foodies, whatever your thing is. There's not a right or a wrong way, but here's something I do know. 100%, we need each other. We need each other. We can't, I can't work through my stuff. I know you got stuff too. I can't get better. I, I can't get sharper. My gifts don't sharpen. I'm unaware of my areas where I could be growing and doing better, my blind spots, right? I, I don't experience real joy on my little exotic island. Even if your exotic island is very beautiful, you might have a fabulous place to hang out in your home. But you know what? Even though God is enough, and he should be first and foremost our priority in our pursuit, right? Number one, pursue God. He knows and he designed us for community because he knows that we will love him and understand him better when we walk together with other believers, when we do life together. So say yes to being with people. Say yes to sharing laughs and tears and praying for one another. Say yes to inviting people over. You don't have to be, have people over all the time, but be open to that. Be open to, open your heart. When you open your door, you open your heart to people. Tell other people your stories. Say yes to sitting quietly with someone who's grieving. You don't even have to talk. Sometimes you just need to be there to be in community, just physically being there. You don't know their story. You don't even need to know their story. Just be there and care. Forgiving each other, right? Keeping the peace. Be quick to forgive. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves and accept those offers for help. For church, arrive early and hang out a little bit after. Stay around. Not to like super late because the pastor is falling asleep from his, needs his afternoon nap. But, but stay and hang out with each other. Open the circle wide right? Look for people who maybe aren't in a circle at the moment and just invite them in, introduce yourself, introduce everybody, connect one another and make sure we say no. Let's determine to say no to relationships that bring out the worst in us. You have some of those, I know you do, and distract you from God's purposes in your life. Proverbs 13 20 says, Whoever walks with a wise man will be wise. Not just at Christmas. There's wise men around you right now. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. Uh, you know, foolish is contagious. That's not good. And say no to pleasing everyone and trying to do everything. Trying to do everything. And you don't have to be perfect. Serve people crackers and cheese or spaghetti or something. Make it easy. Make it simple because it's about being together. God hasn't left us alone, thankfully. He's given us his Holy Spirit, and he's given us each other. Everything that we need for life and godliness is right here in these people who the word of God calls the excellent ones. The one, I think we have that scripture, Psalm 16, 3. Is this the right one? The excellent ones in whom is all my delight, God says. Look around. These people are excellent. Let's take off our glasses that are judgment and criticism and evaluating and just put on the glasses and say, God delights in these people. They are fabulous. Look at how excellent they are. 
look at how excellent they are. God's lighting in them. And so community grows us up and anchors us down. It's where we laugh and it's where we shed some tears. It's not always easy, community, and sometimes it gets a little bit messy, but if you press through, there's a great reward at the end. The deepest, strongest relationships are the ones that have pressed through obstacles. I testify to that. It's true, absolutely true. And community is where we're humbled. It's where we're healed. It's where we persevere, and it's where we experience miracles and victories. And we have somebody to party with when it happens, and that's so much fun. CCC is super committed to community, to building community, and so we want to help you with that. You know, this whole last year and a half has kind of torn at the fabric of relationships, and unfortunately, there's been people who've fallen by the wayside because their connections, for whatever reason, weren't there. But God's calling us to weave together relationships again so that we're a strong and beautiful tapestry for his glory. I gotta close. Let's do that. So what we're gonna do is the Connect Sundays. Make sure you come out. Avoid the temptation to skip. Avoid the temptation thinking, oh, I'm shy, or I don't have any friends there. Well, of course not, because you gotta come. You gotta show yourself friendly. You've gotta if you're pursuing community, I'll tell you what, you're going to be receptive when somebody walks up to you. And they're going to be receptive to you if they're pursuing community. You just watch what God's going to do. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to look back, look back to now and in a few months, and we're going to think, what a difference in our church, in relationships, and the strength of us. The love of God is what distinguishes us from the world. It's so important. I just want to bless you today before I close, but I want to remind you, first and foremost, that our faith should not be built on anything other than God's loving pursuit of us. That is the foundation of our faith. And if it is built on anything else, then it's an unsure and unstable foundation. God is pursuing you. He loves you. There's nothing you can do to stop him. Nothing. Nothing. No sin is too great, no distance too far, no bush too big to hide from God. No. He loves you. Don't allow your past losses, mistakes, failures, experiences to make you think that you have to earn God's love. You don't. None of us, none of us earn God's love. This God of the universe wants you to open your heart and receive all of him today. All of him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus is your Savior today, maybe you're watching online even, God is sweetly knocking at your heart's door. And he's saying, open up your heart to my pursuing love, to my unconditional love. It's powerful. It's persistent. It's sweet. He wants to pull you into his family and establish you there. Thankfully, we don't have to live our lives all on our own. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got one another, which are gifts to us. Gifts, both. The Holy Spirit and the body of Christ are gifts. Don't take him for granted. And there's a passage of Scripture. You know, when the best thing you can do is attach your faith to the Word of God. And let's, I'm going to pray this Scripture over you. And just declare it. It's from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 to 19. Praise you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, yeah, let's stand up. Let's stand up. Just receive this blessing over you. As I declare that God, Heavenly Father, we can't help but bow in honor and respect of you and the incredible sacrifice that you gave by sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, rule and reign in my heart. You are love. You are pursuing love. Take me over. Overcome me. 
thank you for opening that door wide and welcoming me into your family, oh God, for giving each of us your name, your holy name. And it's not to our credit, Lord, not a, but it's according to the riches of your glory. You give each of us a mighty supernatural strength to function under the compulsion of the Holy Spirit in living through us to experience the abundant life that Jesus you came to bring. We acknowledge and declare today that Christ lives in our hearts through faith. Christ, the anointed one. And I agree with your word that the members of Champion City Church are continually being rooted and grounded in your love and in community with the excellent ones who you delight in. We're pursuing you, God. We're pursuing your people, Lord. We're pursuing relationship deeper and deeper. That each one hearing my voice right now will have a revelation of the width and the length and the depth and the height of your love more than they did yesterday. That we would sense the expansiveness, the grandness of the passionate pursuing love of God beyond human knowledge that we are overflowing with all the fullness of God in your anointing and your truth and your love and your joy in your glory God and Champion City Church will bring you glory and will honor you through our pursuit Lord and we thank you today that you first pursued us and your love is the foundation upon which we stand and any good that we do is based and sourced from your love for your glory we declare it that our love in champion city church will be a beacon and a and a lighthouse to the world to come receive of this love of god in jesus name amen 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 what an amazing gift god is what an amazing gift his love is if you would like prayer for any reason, you may even be a guest today. You're welcome. Come forward. We're going to have our prayer team available to minister to you in faith and believe according to the word of God, which is always true, and God's true to his promises. So bless you, church. We love you. Keep pursuing God, and I look forward to seeing you at Grow Groups, pursuing God relationally at discipleship classes, at Encounter, at Connect Sundays. It's going to be a great year, and I bless you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. For more content, hit subscribe, and make sure to follow us on social media. You can also visit championcitychurch.com for more information.